I'm an academic psychologist, researcher in language and cognition, a psychotherapy developer, and have been developing a, an approach called acceptance and commitment therapy, or in, when you use it outside of a therapy context called acceptance and commitment training, or ACT, which is um, over the last 30 years has developed a, a model of uh, what produces life trajectories that are positive or negative called psychological flexibility. There's about a thousand studies on ACT, acceptance and commitment training or therapy, and another four or five hundred on its underlying model and uh, some the basic work on language cognition, emotion, etc. that informs that model. Uh, one advantage of uh, what we've been doing is trying to distill uh, our science down to the small set of processes that predict these life trajectories. And we know that in children and in teenagers and in adults, psychological flexibility predicts whether or not people are going to prosper uh, or headward downward in life uh, in the area of mental health, substance use, not just that, though, physical health, behavioral health, stepping up to the challenges of physical disease, uh, but not just that, how well they do at school or whether or not they care about uh, people around them, um, uh, how do they do in business and organizations. And so there's a collection of life skills, maybe you, you could call it, that seems to be very important. Um, and they only make sense if you say them out loud. I think you would realize uh, there are things that uh, people know at their base, at their best, and many of the wisdom traditions, uh, other uh, so social institutions, spiritual or religious traditions have encouraged some of these processes. But there's a lot of things in the commercial culture nowadays and in the kind of cacophony of the world that we've created that goes in the opposite direction. What psychological flexibility says is if we teach people to be more open to their own experiences, their emotions, sensations, memories, and so forth, less kind of automatically entangled in their own thinking, especially judgments, worries, rumination, and instead can bring sort of a more mindful uh, awareness to the world within, uh, to their own emotions and thoughts, with a sense of a little sense of distance and kind of curiosity and a sense of self-kindness or self-compassion uh, that then they're more able to move their attention towards um, various ways of trying to run from or avoid from difficult feelings or to be right about or be angry, angry about different kinds of uh, evaluations and judgments and instead shift their attention towards uh, what it is that they really deeply value, the qualities of their being and doing that they want to put into the world, and getting their behavior organized around that. All of that reduces impulsivity, increases prosociality, uh, and it uh, gives people kind of a firmer psychological set of legs to stand on uh, when they're facing the challenges of life.